Finally have all the plastic on here and so I started with the photo etch. Now the photo etch on this kit is extremely delicate. If you can see those little stairs there, the stairs were all one piece. And uh, if I just put my finger against it, it's going to be crushed. Um, and it's not that I'm afraid that I'm going to crush the photo etch at some point. It's just a matter of when. Because I know I'm going to set this thing down wrong or try to pick it up and forget and just go... <laughs> but uh, yeah, the stairs there were actually a lot easier than doing the wiring in front here of the harpoon. Dear God, this is just two big V sections of photo etch. And uh, very difficult to put together. Um, they kind of slot together and then go into the tip of the harpoon or the ramming device. You actually probably be better off if you put these together then glued them into the tip and then put this thing on and then slid it into the little slots here which I had to open up a bit to get them to fit. But uh, this is a very delicate item and I just realized I should have sanded some spots that need sanding before I did that to uh, avoid knocking them over. Um, so I was planning on doing setting this down very carefully I was planning on doing a little bit on how to fold photo etch and then I just realized there's no more folding to do I folded what needed to be folded which was just about the stairs so we're going to I've unfolded the wheelhouse that I decided not to use and we're gonna refold it if you do any decent amounts of photo etch work you need uh, a bender and this one is called the bug and it's made by the name I'm forgetting right now so there'll be an annotation up when I put this video up but um, these are near critical if you're gonna do any amount of photo etch trying to do a large amount of photo etch with just pliers and uh, tweezers it just doesn't work out so this one I like well it's okay uh, this is I got the cheapest one they had uh, still these things are kind of expensive this was like 40 or 45 dollars um, it's decent it works pretty well it does have the issue though most of them are larger and um, have two dials this one smaller only has one and the problem with that is if you're working on very small photo etch because there's just one dial you can see it has a slight tendency to move and you're when you're dealing with tiny little teeny bits of photo etch that you find in like 70 second scale kits a tiny little bit of movement is you know not good but they uh, have all these different shapes on here for folding things in different ways because depending on what you're folding if it's something in a weird shape like the chair that I put in the uh, den earlier that was very small and had to be folded and then folded again so I could put one leg in here and then find another spot on here that's the right shape so I can fold it again to get the chair shape but anyway fairly simple get your photo etched usually there's a cut or a groove where the uh, fold is supposed to go so you want that facing I would say facing up but that's the side you want to bend open up our little bender here put the bend just in front of uh, our steel edge and then you get a very specific tool handy dandy razor blade actually um, that is dull. Dull is better than sharp because you're just gonna cut yourself and uh, dull works just fine so you just slide it underneath the piece Oops, this is a little big press it against the edge fold up so you're at the right angle release and there you go there's your fold so it gives you a very nice clean fold doing that with tweezers or uh, some smooth pliers like these pliers with no uh, teeth you can do that as well but this makes for a much cleaner fold and it is a time saver and releases the uh, tension you get from folding photo etch so I have a bit more to do a lot more rigging and 
rails, for crying out loud, that go on the top of the ship. Yeah, I'm breaking these at some point. Before actually continuing on with the photo etch, I want to finish up everything that's going to take any handling of the model first to avoid damaging the photo etch once it's on the model. So I'm going to go ahead and mask off the windows before continuing on. And I got some aftermarket Aztec dummy masks. Oh, oh my god! No, not Aztec dummy again! Yeah. Oh, I picked these up. Um, I got no problem doing this for clear windows because it's not going over paint. It's got nothing that's going to peel up. Uh, however, I was kind of just reading the instructions here and uh, says, oh yeah, um, there's uh, you can use the masks that are included in the Nautilus kit, or but we think we've designed better ones. And I was like, masks in the kit? So uh, yeah, I didn't even notice. The kit already comes with masks. You don't need this, it comes with masks. So th these are, uh, they're a little more sticker-like. Uh, the Aztec dummy stuff is their traditional vinyl, so it's gonna be a bit thicker and stick better. And also they give you uh, masks for the sub lights and uh, the, uh, the little windows that go up front. So these are a bit better. However, uh, I just have to say, I am quite impressed with Pegasus Hobbies. They give you plenty of photo etch for this kit. They give you everything you need. They even give you masks. This is a complete kit. This is quite amazing. I mean, you almost never see masks included in a kit. Um, because, and that's great because I was, gonna, I was dreading having to tape all this off and just use with regular tape and try cutting it out. That's why I just automatically got the Aztec dummy stuff. But uh, it's already included in the kit. They thought of that for you. So that's a nice touch. Anyway, so we're going to go ahead with the Aztec dummy stuff since I bought it and mask everything off, finish up the photo etch, and then we can get to painting. Yay. All right, one last look before we move on to the painting. Got to be careful turning this thing. So everything is complete, and we are pretty much ready for primer. Got all the photo etch on. Oh God, I'm still afraid I'm gonna break something. I actually bent the stairs. Um, you can set this kit down for painting and whatnot, just like that. But if it rolls over, uh, yeah, that photo etch is toast. So, a um, couple things. The spotlights that I put on the sides were a bit too intense and they are or were, kind of still are, reflecting into, they're flooding into here, into the library, and it's really washing out the library, making it really hard to see. So to minimize that, I sprayed a couple coats of uh, Tamiya smoke here. Here, I also did it on the, what's gonna be the wheelhouse lights to uh, slightly lessen the effect. It didn't do much. But um, I also decided to put on what are supposed to be the lanterns onto the kit, basically just act as a wall so the light doesn't hit against the clear styrene here. Uh, so that helped a little bit. Not much else I can do since I already sealed the kit up. Uh, the other option I was thinking of, what I could do at this post time, is drill a hole in the bottom and use like a toothpick and cotton from cotton balls to shove cotton in there to soften up the light, but uh, I went with the smoke instead. And uh, other than that, we're ready to go. I just need to mask off the spotlights and also mask off the LED. Uh, I do not, have not added the these things yet to go over the wheelhouse section because I first need to, I want to paint the inside black and then I'm going to tack it into place which is a little bit of white glue. And doing that means that I don't have to worry about trying to mask off the uh, the clear styrene, which I also smoked a little bit because the wheelhouse lights were a bit too bright as well. So I can just tack this down with a bit of white glue, paint everything up, and then at the very end, pop it off and then put the clear styrene in and finish it off. So there you go. Um, Again, it's a very nice build, and what kind of surprises me is you don't need, really need any aftermarket parts. You got photo etch here, and you got, uh, it comes with masks, so you can build this right out of the kit and build a really nice kit. And 
the accessories that I got, again, and I got the masks from Aztec Dummy, which are not necessary because they are included in the kit. And the photo etch I got is more, it's more supplementary photo etch. It doesn't replace anything. I mean, usually when you buy photo etch, it's to uh, replace some poor quality plastic bits on the kits. And the paragraphics photo etch doesn't do that. It just gives you extra optional parts, which most of them I ended up not using because it just it just wasn't necessary. The plastic parts are on the kit were good enough. There are a few areas that I could have improved. Um, it really didn't occur to me because I was so concentrated on the lighting and other factors. But uh, the plastic chain that can be easy easily replaced with a metal chain of the same size. If I actually um, I don't know what I did with the extra part, but this uh, little spool here, you actually get extras, two extras of those, so you can, uh, this is all one piece here, the, the wheel and the chain, but they give you an extra spool, so you can just put that here, then use a real chain. Also, some of the ladder handhold areas, I could have easily cut that off and replaced that with a little bit of uh, brass wire or paper clip. Uh, I don't want to risk damaging the photo etch, so I'm just going to skip that right now. But that's a couple other options you can do to improve the kit. But other than that, there's not much you have to do. It's it's very nice, details very crisp, and it's virtually you know almost perfect right out of the box. So uh, that's it. I'm going to go hit this with some black primer to make sure we have no light leaks anywhere or any big gaps, and then we'll get on to the actual painting. We're finally at the airbrush booth and we can begin the painting. Now a couple things to go over first. Uh, at first I thought the ship was bronze because it's, um, well at least in the Disney movie, it's brown. Uh, but I had to go back and re-watch it and it was actually, it's an iron ship. It just has a very light coat of rust or oxidation on it, gives it a brown look. Um, and also bronze doesn't make much sense for the time period and I don't think bronze would be strong enough to make a submarine out of. So we're going with iron. Uh, now I had something in mind but I found a video online by another gentleman who uh, whose username I forget at the moment it's RC sub or something I'll link that below but he did a great tutorial on doing uh, the Nautilus and um, basically I'm copying virtually exactly what he did because it just came out so well. Uh, now that we have everything primered uh, I got the little wheelhouse covers temporarily tacked into place. We're going to start with the painting. And um, we are going to go for a dark iron, rusted iron look, but uh, we're going to weather it down. We need to start with something a bit brighter. I have mixed up here some Vallejo Air Chrome, which is a little bit of black. I wanted steel, but I'm running a little low and I have lots of chrome, so this will be totally fine. Way too bright for iron, but we're going to eventually make it a lot darker. So that's the first step, chrome and black. That's the that's on. The chrome down now, just have to do a little bit of uh, panel shading. And so got some black in the airbrush. And we're just going to go around around all the panels and into the recesses and add black. And that will give some more shade once we put the uh, next layer on. Um, so we're going to do this and then cover the whole thing with a dull coat and pick it up uh, the next day. <laughs> 